Welcome to anyone watching, it's Craig at mysimpit.co.uk and welcome to part 22 of the front dash build. In this video we're going to look at the altimeter, we're going to look at the design and build of that. We will then install it into the front dash frame and bring it online and run some operation tests. Let's buckle up. My starting point for the altimeter is to run a whole series of tests on a number of different stepper motors. We can see one I'm using here and the type of steppers I'm looking at now are ones that can run faster and they also rotate at 360 degrees. Pretty much everything I've used to this point has been the slower moving X27 style steppers which run for a, a limited range. And also these ones will need to pull on an optical sensor um, or some kind of hall sensor for zero detection. With a number of the steppers being sourced from abroad, it does take a short while for all those to arrive and be tested. So during this time that this part of the project's ongoing in the background, I turn my attention to some other parts of the altimeter and how I'll approach those. There are three parts of the altimeter in terms of readouts from the sim, all of which will be done via DCS BIOS, which I'm thinking of in terms of what components I'll use. And for the main altimeter flag, I've decided I'm going to use a yellow rectangular LED for that one. For the main altitude reading, I'll use a standard 128 by 32 OLED. All of the OLEDs I've used tend to be I squared C for just simplification of connection. And I've used this one and got on it, gotten on with it very well for a number of panels. I used it as in the UHF repeater and the fuel panel, um, so quite comfortable. And that'll be about the right size. But then for the barometric reading, uh, there's a smaller one that I've sourced online, which I've not used in the project before, uh, but I think it will work very well at this point. And it's literally just a 72 by 40, so uh, just a very small one there, but should be the right size. With it now clear in my mind which physical components I use for these three, for the OLEDs I start thinking about the sketches and the way in which the data will be displayed. Of the sketches I'll be using, one relates to the overall altitude reading and the other is the barometric reading. And the one that's really on my mind is this one here, which is the main readout. What we can see on now is the... OLED and sketch running for the UHF repeater and because it's this that I would have adapted effectively the display for the altimeter would have looked like what we see on screen now and there's nothing wrong with that display it does show all the numeric values very clearly and they update in line with the sim but I do feel that for this particular panel being where it's placed in the front dash and it's so prominent and that the this readout in the centre of the altimeter is also so pr prominent within that gauge itself. I did really want to do or have something extra with this readout to give it a much better look from an aesthetic point of view. What I had in mind was to find a way to have the numeric values updating as they do in the sim, which is by a rotation of one digit to another. So whilst looking online for a, a way to possibly do this, I came across a thread on the ED forum by member Middoff Art, and within his thread he has produced some code specifically for this, for the altimeter, and has kindly shared that, and it achieves exactly what we're looking for. So if we have a look on screen now, um, by comparison to what we looked at just previously, we can see the way in which his sketch updates. So to test this sketch, I've took the A10 up to 40,000 feet and now I'm just in a, a steep descent just to test it. This is exactly what I'm looking for. That update of the display in keeping with the sim. And unlike things like, say, the radio cluster where the values are absolute, so for the preset station, 
it could never be a value between two preset stations. We know that for the altimeter gauge, it's changing between hundreds of feet and then thousands of feet. So it's good for it to capture that movement from the one value to the other. If you'd like to use this sketch as produced by Middlethart, then I'd suggest you go over to the ED forum and we'll just have a look at that now. So on a Google search, if you search ED forum and then the name of the thread, and it's the first one in the results. And beyond just being able to take from this thread the OLED, it's a good read from lots of other information in there. There's a lot of discussion around a K40 laser that Middlefart had bought and set up, and it talks about that, and it also talks about modifications to it. There's also a good bit of information um, detailing some of the initial gauges built. And... Also a good read around some of the driver chips used and there's some links to some really interesting detailed information that's worth reviewing. And then finally it brings us to, to the link to the sketch which is on GitHub. And if we just finally jump over to GitHub and then we can yeah we can see where they're all placed. So uh, in the description of this video, I'll put a link both to GitHub and to the thread, but uh, but yeah, a really good uh, contribution there with that sketch. I now spend some time interfacing some of the other components and just checking the output through DCS BIOS. So this switch will be used to trigger the altimeter flag, which lets us know the mode of the altimeter operation. If we now have a close-up look at the yellow rectangular LED that we have used, and as you can see, I've printed the text onto some acetate, which I've then stuck onto it using some clear double-sided sticky tape. We're at the point we can machine all the parts needed, and then start combining some of them together, installing some of the components into them, and also 3D printing some of the spacers. And you can see that some of the cutouts in the background have a irregular shape at the bottom to accommodate these components that we can see here on the left. At this stage I do a test fit and this is really because I'm balancing what I need the thickness of the spacer to be but also considering line of sight from the seating position. It doesn't take much of a recess to reach the point at which the readouts are obscured given the viewing angle. Following the test fit we can disassemble it and now start painting around all the rims ready for the final full assembly. I tend to paint the cutouts in batches so we've got a couple here which are for the altimeter and then some that relate to other panels. We now start to integrate the OLEDs and some of the other components into the panel. And something that I give quite some consideration to is after working through a number of stepper motors and finding one which I'm happy to use, it's then a question of what kind of a shaft extension to do I design a 3D print so it will be able to protrude through the fascia and I'm also test printing some 3D pointers as well. At this point in the construction, I'm directing most of my attention to the integration of the stepper motor. And that's mostly from a mechanical perspective where you've got rotation of a dual shaft, where at the one end you've got an extension to drive the pointer, and at the other there's a, an arm which will rotate and pass through an optical sensor. And the trigger point for the optical sensor, as we can see there, that really is a key part for this gauge to work properly. With a clear plan and design now of how we'll integrate the stepper motor, I can disassemble everything and look to build it back up where the layer on the left we can see now, which will hold the stepper in place, is also the LED backlighting layer. We can then move on to the rear of the gauge face, which holds in place via brackets and screws, the OLEDs and other components. And then a 3D printed spacer, which holds in place the optical sensor. We're now ready to start putting all the layers together. So we have this completed layer, which has the shaft extension on. We can just catch the 
side profile there. And I do a test run with a 3D printed pointer, which isn't yet painted, but at this point, just to check that mechanically during this, the final assembly now, everything's working as it should. I design and 3D print a number of other brackets, and that's to hold in place and support the PCB slave devices, which are going to run everything over an RS-485 network. Although this type of network can run with a, a mix of different components, I do find that stepper motors are really where it comes into its own in cutting down what would otherwise be a vast number of COM ports. Well, you can see now that the final assembly is taking shape, and I'm just running some tests with the backlighting. My approach to backlighting has been to suspend a layer of LEDs at a certain distance from the rear of the acrylic and it gives a very good even cascade of light. However in this case it also meant that the stepper was further back and hence why I'd got a shaft extension. For other people that might not want to backlight these panels or they might have a different method of backlighting they could probably put the stepper pretty much right up against the rear of the acrylic fascia. It's now time to convert the Arduino sketches from IRQ serial to RS485 and in doing that I'm now running some initial tests just to check everything's definitely running as it should be. Although this older laptop's not powerful enough to really run the game on to actually fly, it is more than sufficient just to be able to do some tests on the panels and use it as a test station. So everything looks to be running as it should be. I'll just trigger a change in the mode of operation. Yeah, that looks good. The panel at this point is now complete. If we just take a moment though to look very closely at how this is running mechanically, just so it can be seen exactly how the optical sensor is triggered and how the pointer needle is driven. We're looking at the panel now from the side. What I will do, I will also superimpose a view from the front so we can see them both running in unison. What's really great about this type of approach using a sensor is that upon the startup and initialization of the Arduino, it not only at that point finds a zero position, but at every 12 o'clock position, as you look to the right there, as you can see that 3D printed arm passing through the optical sensor, you can see the red light flashing every time it does it. That at that point is allowing it to ensure it's calibrated correctly, so you can sometimes, if it went slightly, slightly out of sync just by even a few steps, it will self-correct at that point. And this is really great because it means even at the points where the changes in pitch are not so dramatic and therefore changes in altitude aren't so dramatic, it means that during those points where the time it takes to go through one full rotation is much greater and there's more potential for the number of steps to be slightly out, marginally out, it ensures it's self-corrected. So what all this amounts to is that it runs really well and in line very much to what's happening in the sim. Prior to the installation of this into the front dash, we'll just take a moment just to pan round and get a view of the final completed unit. I've 3D printed a knob that you can see in the bottom right there. This switch is what controls the operation mode of the altimeter. In this panel I've used three slave devices on the RS-485 network. It's likely I'll rejig it at some point in the future. Um, it is a case I could probably just use two. And that would slightly reduce the length of this. Because we're now running a stepper motor that will draw more current than the X27s, I am running that off its own separate external power supply rather than that current being drawn through the PCBs on the network. And we're now ready for install. It's looking good. And we're now finished by bringing them online and running some operation tests. In this test we're looking at how the altimeter responds to a sudden change in pitch and a rapid descent. And we're looking to compare the physically built altimeter to the one in the simulator to be sure that it mirrors it correctly. In the top right of the screen we can see a zoomed in view of the altimeter 
in the sim and we can see below that at the bottom of the screen is the physical altimeter as installed and I'll bring up a zoomed in view of that on the bottom left of the screen We're now entering the manoeuvre from the zoomed in and zoomed out view of the physical altimeter we can see that that unit is running in line with what's happening in the sim and with the backlighting we can see that it'll work well in night operations with the flight control stick we'll just we'll just now look to take control of the aircraft and level it out and we've now gone into another test where we'll intentionally create an impact that will end the current session with the physical altimeter still holding those readings then as we launch a new session you can see the gauge update itself So all is well and looking good. As we near the end of the video and we've checked that the altimeter has passed its initial operation test, I think I'll get a little bit of flight time in before I power down. As I spend a few moments here just clicking on different panels within the cockpit, it's good to see that all these things built individually and then brought online and tested individually are all working very well together. It's nice to get to a point with the front dash build that we're over the halfway mark. The altimeter has been an enjoyable panel to build because there's been so many learnings from it and the main thing I'd used in this which I hadn't previously was a much faster stepper motor which has a full range of motion 360 degree and therefore would need the use of an optical sensor and those learnings will be needed given some of the panels that I'll go on to now build I now start another research phase in the project where I spend some time to look into and plan some of the other upcoming panels and I look forward to sharing those in the future. Thanks for watching.